Hey, I'm Steve with 45 North, and today we're gonna to talk about matching up the correct rim and tire widths. Now, it might not seem like it's really that big of a deal, but in reality, having too wide of a rim, for example, can actually dramatically uh, change the shape and performance of your tire. So in order to make your tire perform the way it was intended to, you need to have your rim and tire match up in a compatible range. Okay, first we're gonna start with a rim that's too wide for the tire. First thing this does is flattens out your tread cap and that brings your side lugs up uh, in contact with the ground much more frequently. This increases rolling resistance, so obviously you're gonna have a slower ride. Additionally, you'll notice there's kind of a corner created right here. That ends up causing something we call auto steer. Uh, what that is, is when you reach this corner turning into a turn, um, it kind of pulls you into that turn rather than creating a smoother transition. Uh, it creates an unpredictable ride. Additionally, you'll notice that the sidewall is much more straight up and down. It creates a firmer sidewall um, and gives you a lot less compliance, so you're going to have a little bit rougher ride. Next, we're going to talk about a rim that's too narrow for the tire. First, you'll notice that it creates a much more light bulb shape. What happens here is the rounding of the tread cap pulls the corner lugs away from the ground, so it's gonna take much longer when you turn into a corner for those lugs to engage, uh, obviously offering up a little less traction. Uh, additionally, you'll see how round this sidewall is. Um, when you're cornering, this ends up putting too much pressure on the sidewall, and because it's round, uh, you'll start to feel a lateral rolling um, it starts to feel like slipping, but in reality, it's just the, the sidewall folding on you. So next, let's look at what the correct rim and tire matchup looks like. You'll notice there's just a slight curve to the tread cap, nice rounded sidewall. This allows the tread to engage uh, with the terrain the way it's supposed to, and it's gonna provide a predictable feel in cornering with that tread wall. So now that we know the importance of matching up the correct rim and tire width, let's take a look at two key numbers that'll help you identify the right fit. The first one is going to be identifying the internal bead width of a rim. That's the measurement from here to here. Again, it's, I stress the importance of the internal bead width and not the external. In some cases, both will be listed. Typically, you can find this number on the manufacturer's website, and it's going to be measured in millimeters. The second important number is the tire's ISO number. This represents the inner bead width of the tire, and it can be seen as the first number in the tire's ETRTO number. Uh, this is typically measured in millimeters, and additionally, the second number here represents the tire's internal diameter. Both of these can be found on the tire's sidewall. As a general guideline, your internal bead width should be between 40 and 80% of your tire's ISO width. This can be found by multiplying your tire's ISO by 0.4 and 0.8, and that'll give you the range you need to fall within. Additionally, your manufacturer's websites will have more precise recommendations. As an example, 45north.com lists a range of compatible internal rim widths for every one of our tires. So for more information, visit 45north.com.